So Sony have just announced the new ZV-1, which is being branded, marketed as a, a vlogger slash content creator's camera. Essentially, it seems to be an RX100 Mark V slash Mark 7 with a few adaptations to make it a bit better suited to video shooters. But in my mind, it's not brilliant for vlogging. Now, I will admit I've not tried the camera personally, but I have seen several reviews from other people who have used the camera, and this is my judgment based off my experiences with other cameras and what I've seen from them. Overall, to be fair, it does seem like a pretty well-specced compact camera with some very good video features. It's essentially got the same video specs that you find on the Sony Alpha mirrorless cameras, and they're pretty decent. Sure, they haven't moved into the modern world of 10-bit, they're still stuck in 8-bit, but for vloggers, I'm not really convinced that that's going to be a huge problem. But it has got some pretty decent specs for video shooters. It's got 4K recording, it's got 1080 up to 120 frames a second, so we'll give you the options of being able to shoot the 4K and crop in if you need to. It's going to give you the slow motion footage. It does do up to like almost a thousand frames a second super slow-mo, but that's probably a really low resolution and more of a kind of a rare gimmick rather than a necessity. There's no viewfinder on the ZV-1, which to be fair, for shooting video, you don't really use a viewfinder, you tend to use the screen, which on this is a fully articulating screen, which is where the big problem of this camera for me lies, and is something that I've not seen anyone else mention. But I'll get onto that shortly. The first thing I want to address is something I have seen other people mention, which is the lens. Now, the lens on this camera is a... Essentially, it's like an equivalent 24 to 70 millimeter. Now... Some people will argue that 24mm focal length for vlogging isn't sufficient. It's not wide enough. Now, this is personal preference, but right now I'm using the Sony a6400 with the Sigma 16mm f1.4 lens. And this is an equivalent 24mm field of view. And this is me at a kind of an arm's length from the camera. And there's plenty of room to fit me in the frame, but obviously your surroundings are a little bit limited. I mean, I have seen people suggest that, you know, with 24 mil, you're going to be stuck like this filming all the time. I'm sorry, but my face is this far away from the lens. So I would say that a 24 mil equivalent focal length is a usable focal length for shooting vlogs. But obviously, there may be times where wider would be better. And I think for me personally, there's been more times where I've wanted something wider than something longer. So I think it would have been better for them to design a new lens for this camera that was more like a maybe a, an 18 to 40 mil equivalent focal length that would probably still be workable within a compact camera without oversizing it too much. But I do think that more people that shoot vlogs and video content would prefer to have the benefit of a wider focal length for the sacrifice of a longer focal length. And let's not forget, it's a 20 megapixel sensor so with the, that and Sony's clear image zoom, you could optically zoom the lens to its maximum focal length. And then if you needed to go further, you could digitally enhance that in. Okay, you're not going to get the same depth of field as you would have from a longer focal length. But then the depth of field on compact cameras isn't particularly brilliant anyway. Like I said, the widest angle on that camera is about 20, I think it's either 24 or 25 mil equivalent which is about what you're seeing now. But even though the lens is an f1.8, the effective aperture at 24mm is about f5.2. Right now I'm shooting at f2, which is an effective 2.8, so you're getting a little bit of blur in the background. But with the ZV-1, you're seeing more like this and as an equivalent, so you're not getting quite as much background separation. Which may or may not be a problem to you, it's personal preference. But I do think that if they if they were going to market this more as a vlogging camera, that they would be better to have shifted the lens to something that's more fills the needs of more vloggers rather than general shooters. Because a 24 to 70 is more a stills photographer's kind of lens, whereas vloggers and video shooters tend to shift more towards like a 16 to 35 mil lens, or so it seems. But that's just my opinion. Obviously, you might think completely differently. But my biggest issue with this camera, which is something I've not seen anyone mention, is the articulating screen. 
And it's a shame, really, because it was a common complaint for quite a number of years of Sony mirrorless cameras that they don't have a front-facing screen. None of the full-frame models to date have a front-facing screen at all. It wasn't until like a year or two ago when Sony brought out the A6400 that they introduced a front-facing screen, but they went up and over the top as opposed to around the side like you would predominantly see with the likes of Canon cameras. Now, because Canon for so long were such a popular camera brand and they were one of the few that did put front-facing screens, it kind of became a trademark of vlog cameras that they have side-facing screens. So Sony for this one have gone from an, an up and over screen like you saw on the 64, the 61 and 6600 and have switched to a side flip round screen, which for me is a big mistake. Because for me, there's a big issue with the side flip screen as opposed to an up and over when it comes to a vlog setup. And it's something I have highlighted in a previous video, which is that when you're sitting in front of a camera filming yourself, you quite often will find yourself looking at the screen. One, to check everything's still okay, the camera's still recording, the focus is still okay, your, you know, composition's okay. And two, sometimes it's distracting, because if you're moving around, if something's going on behind you, you're constantly glancing at the screen. Now, if the screen's coming up and over the top of the camera, that puts the screen on the same vertical axis as the lens. So throughout all of my videos, I will be shifting my eyes between the lens and the screen. But because the screen is on the same axis as the lens, you don't see my eyes shifting all that much. And obviously, eye contact is a very important part of a conversation. Side flip screens, on the other hand, the screen is going to be like there, essentially. So, so if I glance now between the lens and where the screen would be, it becomes glaringly obvious that I'm distracted, that I'm not looking at you guys. I'm looking at the screen. Which is quite famously why Casey Neistat wears sunglasses in all of his videos. Because he predominantly vlogs with side flip screens. And he's a bit like me. He's very easily distracted by what the screen's doing. And he's constantly watching the screen. So rather than have all these videos of him not actually looking down the lens. And just him looking off at the side like this. He decided to fix the problem by just wearing sunglasses. So you can't see that he's not looking at you. Now, obviously, if you've got a camera that's got a big central viewfinder dome sticking out the camera, then a flip up screen kind of becomes a problem. So flip round becomes the only option. But in cameras that don't have that central dome, they either have a rangefinder style to the side like this, or they have no viewfinder at all, like the ZV-1 or the Canon M6 Mark II, there's no reason why you can't have a flip up and over. Now, I suspect the reason why they've gone with a flip round as opposed to a flip up screen is because of that furball monstrosity of a dead cat that they supply with the camera. Because the camera's got a fairly sizable microphone right over the middle of the camera, and then the hot shoe moved off to the side, but they supply a dead cat that clips into the hot shoe to help uh, protect against wind for the microphone. Now, Sony claimed that the microphones are directional microphones that are supposed to be forward facing i think arguably you could have put the microphones on the front of the camera to be more forward facing but i suspect a lot of people might not use the onboard microphone they'll favor an actual shotgun microphone plugged into the side because from what i've seen of gerald undone's tests the onboard microphone seems to do a fairly okay job, but it does seem to have an awful lot of noise suppressions. So overall, I think the ZV-1 is a pretty good vlog style camera. You can definitely tell that there's, there's certain details that have been very carefully thought out by Sony to try and make them as, as good as possible for video shooters. Little things like the position of the recording button, etc. But for me, it's too much of a we've just modified the RX100 rather than we've designed this brilliant vlogging camera. I think a much better vlogging camera design would have been that same basic design, the small compact camera, but a shorter focal length range shifted more to the wide end, which would have been better suited to vloggers, but still have maintained that small compact size. And gone back to the flip up screen that we're more used to seeing from Sony rather than that side flip screen. Those are just my opinions on it. What do you make of the ZV-1 if you make anything at all of it? 
Leave your thoughts and comments in the box down below while you're down there. If you haven't already, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. Thank you so much for stopping by and hopefully I will see you in the next video.